More now on Kim Jong Un's latest provocation. Yep, another missile launch. A Pentagon official confirming to Fox News that North Korea has yet again defied the international community, launching some sort of ballistic missile just hours ago. But the Pentagon hasn't exactly confirmed on what type of missile that was. We are told, though, that President Trump has been briefed on the test by the national security team. Uh, the missile reportedly traveled 435 miles, and if that's confirmed, it could mean a successful test for Kim Jong Un's missile program after a series of their recent failures. So what does all this mean? Lieutenant General Richard Newton joins us, former assistant vice chief, vice chief of staff of the U.S. Air Force. General, always good to see you. Welcome tonight. Eric, good to be with you again. Uh, what are your sources saying, and do you think this was indeed a successful test when they've had such failures recently? Well, the, the sources I've tapped into are still trying to do some assessment on whether or not the test was uh, successful or not. Uh, those sources also indicate that presumably the test they had anticipated uh, could have been of the NK-17, which is a medium uh, intermediate range ballistic missile. Uh, this is the sixth test uh, this year, at least uh, on my count. For 2017, the most recent one uh, was back on April 28th. If you recall, that uh, it had to malfunction or exploded a few minutes after after launch. But uh, there, th this is an, this is again an, another indication that the North Koreans are being very aggressive with their ballistic missile testing. Yeah, uh, earlier in the program, uh, Gordon Chang, the analyst, of course, uh, said he believes it was a message to uh, the new South Korean president Moon Jae-in, uh, who is more liberal who is reaching out to Pyongyang, right. who does not like the fact that we put the THAAD in South Korea, and that could be a change. Look at the type of reaction he gets. I mean, he doesn't get a, a welcome, hello, let's negotiate and, and open the door. He gets a missile. Right. You've got a, a more liberal president elected in President Moon uh, and is now in office and, and you know, certainly wants to engage North Korea, uh, which is, uh, again, something that's going to be vastly different than the last two uh, presidential administrations in, in South Korea. Uh, it is. It's not a very good welcome sign for, for the new president, uh, particularly after we just declared operational the uh, theater high altitude air, uh, or aero defense system, the THAAD that we've put in place in, in South Korea, that is to defend South Korea and, and the region, or at least the local region there, and, and, of and in, uh, ballistic missiles. I know, and in, li in light of what happened tonight, I mean, what happens if they, if they kick that THAAD out? Can they do it? Uh, and are you referring to the, North, the South Koreans? The South, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, you know, certainly that would that could be an option, I suppose. But the fact that we just went through all the effort to make it operational, uh, the fact that you've got still very strong U.S. Uh, South Korea relationships, uh, particularly along the lines of national security, regardless if you've got a conservative or quote a liberal president and now President Moon in South Korea. Also, what President Moon would be facing is is uh, you know what messaging is that to China? He would be appearing to have placate the Chinese, perhaps, if he then all of a sudden decided to take the THAAD system out of, uh, out of South Korea. And again, on the heels of this most recent test against the seventh test, uh, I don't think that would be a good move. Yeah, and also there's something else that's going on, and that's a new exercises. We have 28,000 troops in South Korea, as you know. Right. But they've got U.S. joint, U.S., Japan, and two European nations military exercises. Could that have factored into Kim Jong-un's thinking, that that's a, you know, a message to us, as these usually are? Well, and he, yeah, he, he goes through these throws of, of provocations when there are U.S., uh, South Korea, or U.S. other joint te uh, exercises going on down there. But let's be very clear, you know, uh, the Supreme Leader knows nothing other than strength and power. And that's where the, I think it's critical that the United States, with certainly with, uh, with its uh, allied relationships with South Korea and Japan and other uh, allies and friends in the region, that we demonstrate that strength, we demonstrate capability. Uh, we've got a new national security uh, leadership team with President Trump and, and his national security leaders, uh, among with uh, you know, Secretary Madison, Secretary Tillerson, and others. We need to make sure that we demonstrate this uh, strong military capability, as well as the political will to rally the nation, both in the Congress and in, in, in across America, that we will continue to be strong. We will continue to protect U.S. national security interests wherever they may be around the globe, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region, particularly on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, I think that's very important. Do, do you think the administration is doing that, you know, successfully right now? I mean, then you got Kim Jong-un threatening a sea of fire, you know, and to, uh, he puts out these videos targeting blowing up Washington. Well, you know, there's, uh, with, with the Supreme Leader, with Kim, I mean, there are so many unknown unknowns, if you will, pardon the expression, but you've got to be able to, again, 
put all your national security capabilities at the table. And it has to be regarding if it's diplomatic, if it's economic and financial, and certainly military. They all go hand in hand. We want the military card to be played last, however. But the military card can support U.S. national security interests by, again, showing a strength. For instance, putting the Carl Vincent uh, Curie Task Force there, as he did uh, last month, and so forth. It, it's, it's well, there was, all, there was it's some all, dispute over that. It went down to, like, off Indonesia or something. But I mean, what should we do, finally? I mean, um, what would you... How would, do you think the White House should react to this test? Uh, certainly, it may be brought by the uh, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley to the uh, Security Council on Monday as a yes. potential protest. What is our step right now to, to show, as you say, to Kim Jong-un, mm -hmm. you know, stop? Well, there are multiple steps. Number one, uh, I think we need to make sure that uh, we set expectations. If we have enter entertained the, the notion of getting to a negotiating or bargaining table, we have to set expectations that those have all failed including U.N. resolutions, okay? That's, that's a kind of a glasses half empty approach to this. But should we decide to move forward with uh, either negotiations or demonstrating U.S. Uh, power in this, in this area? We've got to make sure that we rally our friends and allies, that we are able to demonstrate capabilities that we have, such as bringing in the Carl Vinson and other capabilities. We conduct these joint exercises. We, we continue to follow up on those. And we make sure that, that uh, the Supreme Leader understands that the U.S. does have military capability, but we also have the political will. We've got the U.S. national security team now in place, led by President Trump, who will demonstrate these capabilities and follow up. Uh, and I think, other, again, if we do enter into negotiations, as I think could be a, a byproduct at some point, uh, uh, along with our efforts to date, that we, however, put certain conditions on the table. Mm -hmm. Number one, release quickly... American prisoners. Uh, make sure that, uh, you know, he also does not do any more provocative in terms of statements or military forces exercise and so forth, and that he withdraws, withdraws from missile, ballistic, missile, ballistic missile testing and nuclear weapon testing right, as well. General. Uh, sorry, we're up against the clock. Can never do anything with, uh, about that, but we thank you, of course, always for your insight tonight.